Okay, guys. Hey, welcome to the Alkalize to Realize chat show. I'm Gabby Zakara, and we're joined with the real beautiful and amazing Alicia Wilcox today. Um, Alicia is like an astrology guru. Um, she reads the stars like it's a second language. Um, and you also work in holistic healing um, using a range of natural, universal, and ancient healing modalities. Um, to facilitate healing and transformation. Um, you're also the founder of Soul in Balance, um, kind of a really cool, is it like a bit of like a, a movement or just like channels at the minute, like kind of um, all about astrology and um, aligning yourself and positive vibes and stuff. Um, so Alicia, welcome, hey. Hey, thank you so much for that amazing introduction. So right. Um, so I wanted to like find out um, to start it all off. How did you get into astrology? Because you've been doing it since you was like eight, haven't you? Yes. So I was always a super sensitive kid. Um, I don't know if you're a water, if anyone else knows much about astrology, but I'm a water sign. I'm a Cancer, so I'm super sensitive, and I just never understood how everyone else just wasn't as sensitive as me. And then I was dyslexic as well, so I couldn't read or write. And then my mum had astrology books, but I could somehow read astrology books. So then I just started learning about myself. And for the first time, I things made sense. Like I didn't feel so alone. And yeah, it all kind of rolled along from there. Then when I was like a teenager, I'd be like, people would come to me and say, yeah, I'm with this new guy. He star signs this and mine's this. Can you tell me, you know, how we're going to work and what's going on? So then I'd look it up and then I'd tell them and then give everyone relationship advice. <laughs> and yeah, and then I kind of put it all on hold because I kind of, when I got to about 20, I just wanted to fit into society because I got so much crap for being into astrology and being into past lives. So then I sold motorcycles for five years and then I became a real estate agent and sold houses for five years. And then in 2012, it was just like, what am I doing? Like, this is just so not for me. Like I'm just not living my true path. And yeah, then I flipped back to astrology and healing and all the rest. And that's how I'm here today that's so cool so <laughs> through all that time though even though you kind of like moved away from astrology were you always still using it in your personal life yeah always always like people were still always coming to me for astrology advice relationship advice personal advice and I'd always use astrology and healing stuff but I never I kind of more focused on fish trying to fit into the box you yeah. know trying to be the you know conditioned view of um successful you know like just and I just it didn't work for me like no matter how hard I tried it just I was just never designed to just fit into that type of you know mm -hmm. status quo if that makes sense so yeah I've always used it always used natural therapies always been into astrology like always 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 but just kind of pushed it to the side a little bit more mainly for people that were close to me I think at that time anyway yeah and then was it in 2012 you started working as holistic health um at, was it is it like a health spa or something what what is it that you do um yeah I worked in natural therapies clinic where there was like chiropractors naturopaths um yeah Chinese medicine acupuncture and things like that and then I started uni so I um at 30 went to uni <laughs> considering like I failed at school stayed down you know never passed anything changed schools all the time yeah and then I just went to uni and um, I started studying a Bachelor of Health Science in naturopathy, which is, yeah, plant medicine. And then it all just kind of, yeah, rolled from there. And then I started studying astrology more seriously and then doing, you know, Reiki and shamanic practices. And it just over the years, just been, you know, piling it all on. Yeah, that's mm. awesome. And then, um, so with like all the plant medicine stuff, you wanted to actually bring that into your soul and balance of what what tell the listeners what your soul in balance um is what's kind of like the main message for it and what is it is like a movement is it your channels is it a business what is it so soul in balance is the business name so i'm wanting everyone to have like a balanced soul you know with negative and positive integrating who they really are like 
you know, really inspiring people to be their true authentic selves, like using their creativity, following their dreams, following their passions, um, you know, getting in touch with their feelings, healing their trauma, like really just being who they're really meant to be. So that's why it's called Soul in Balance. And it was funny because the clinic I was working in was called Back in Balance. <laughs> Right, and then I changed my name to Soul in Balance. But yeah, Soul in Balance, I chose that because it kind of integrated everything. Like a lot of astrologers, you know, just use their name and astrology, and then same with you know natural therapists or energy healers. So I wanted a, just a name that kind of just entailed everything. Just you know, really just held everything. So that's what Soul in Balance is. Mm -hmm. Because it's mm. funny because a lot of people who um, a lot of people who don't know a lot about astrology, um, they kind of assume that it's literally just like your horoscope in the back of a magazine and that's it. But yeah. when you learn about astrology, it literally governs everything. Like it governs like not only like your body, but like your, uh, your life, like your situations. It governs the world, world situations. It literally governs everything, like all energies under, under the sun, basically. Um, mm -hmm. And so, to obviously, it is all about your soul and balance, isn't it? Like your soul is all comp all compassing. It's basically like just kind of bringing it all together, really. Like you say, it's not just um, telling you what to do that day. It's literally all about your soul and how you've been conditioned and stuff. And what do you think the importance is of knowing your astrology chart and like knowing thyself through your astrology chart? Mm, exactly everything you said is exactly correct um i think everyone's kind of grown up with the idea that astrology is just your sun sign like that is just one aspect about you and you know we all see our you know our horoscopes in the back of the paper or the magazines and yet people just think that's what it is it's like and every planet is an aspect of ourselves like mercury is the way we communicate venus is the way we make money and you know what we're attracted to in romance you know mars is our sexuality and how we get our needs met and you know with the south node and the north node like this can be our past lives what past lives we've had and what direction our soul is going mm -hmm. and it also shows us like where we're wounded and just many many things about ourselves and you know if we're on the healing journey if we're really wanting to connect to who we are and what we're here to do getting your astrology birth chart is such a helping hand like it really is a blueprint print of your soul journey this lifetime and there's also even charts called the draconic chart which is a chart of the soul before you came onto the planet as well so yeah. astrology is absolutely amazing like you can even take your partner and yourself and put it on two charts and you can see what past lives you've had how you two connect you know what issues you're going to have what struggles you have to learn and you know like lots of things like astrology is amazing but i think you know it's really been i think frowned upon i think it started with like christianity and a lot of the religions where if you can see outside reality anything outside reality is classed as evil Mm -hmm. You know, so, you know, a lot of people have just been conditioned to believe that astrology is fake, astrology is wrong and, you know, all those types of things. So, yeah, there's a lot of prejudice with astrology, but I think people are waking up more and more. Like when I was doing astrology, nobody talked about Mercury retrograde. Like now everyone's talking about Mercury retrograde. It's actually like really <laughs> awesome that people are just starting to like, you know, start talking about this stuff. Yeah. Like it's, it's really, really amazing. Yeah. Um, mm. Yeah. Is that is it draconian astrology? How to work out your draconian? The draconic thing? chart. Oh yeah, yeah. So the, the the draconic chart is so you get your normal chart and you just click an aspect like when you're on you know whatever astrology program you're using you just click on draconic chart right. and it will show your chart from like what your what like where your soul was at before you were born. Mm -hmm okay cool yeah but but it still has kind of the same aspects as what you've got in your chart now but it's just shifted so like the nodal access i don't know if anyone's even going to know this but the nodal access will be like um aries libra instead of whatever it is now but i can go over this right <laughs> But yeah, like it's really amazing. Like you can even do a progress chart, like of 
you know, since you've been born, the chart of when you've been born to where your chart is right now and what where your soul's at right now and you'll see where the, the planets have shifted. So mm-hmm. it's it's really amazing. I can't explain enough how mm-hmm. everybody should have some knowledge of astrology. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people in Egypt and the Mayans and all that, they all use the stars yeah. to predict what is going on and we're all so affected by the planets. Um, like they're just big magnets of energy in the sky and as they move they just pull everything pull our emotions and pull scenarios that happen um and like even the stuff with the coronavirus it was all predicted by astrologers like obviously not the fine details of it being um a virus but Mm -hmm. we all talked about how the saturn pluto conjunction will bring down big corporations the whole world will come to a halt and we'll all have to come home with the north node which is the collective soul direction in cancer and cancer represents the home so we didn't necessarily knew like what exactly it was going to be but yeah astrologers for at least a year leading up to this whole situation we're all predicting the collapse of everything we're all having to just come home come home to ourselves so astrology is really amazing and for people that um don't know much about it it's really worth looking into especially to learn about yourself yeah Yeah. couldn't oh my god (laughs) it's so important i honestly think it should be taught in school along with self-love classes (laughs) a thousand percent with all Mm. like the collapse and the shutting down of stuff and a lot of people are home teaching now I just really Mm. would love to see I mean home teaching can be a struggle for a lot of people but I'd just love to see Mm. now the opportunity of just changing the school curriculum to stuff that we could actually like use as real valuable things like even just exactly. like learning the power of the mind, the power of thoughts, like you say, your astrology, like the, the universe is literally all just energy and how much energy affects like each other and how you can condition energy and um, like how to like meditate, be nice to each other, all these different things. Um, mm-hmm. So important and how much power and like, knowledge would we have if we could actually like just grow up like that and how much nicer would yes. it be humanity just like being aware mm-hmm. of these things and having control of yourself and stuff it'd be nice to see that change um i don't know if it'd happen or not do you see that <laughs> do you see positive changes coming or do you kind of just obviously you you'll know what's going on in 2020 it's all written in the stars obviously so for the next like for the rest of the year do you see kind of positive shifts coming or is it kind of a bit more like bit chaotic still um still a lot more clashes to come i think this year is just going to get harder and harder especially leading into next year as well like we're currently in venus retrograde along with all the other outer planets as well and then we're going to have mercury retrograde and then we're going to have mars retrograde so this is a really hard year like Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I don't see things easing up, especially from September through to the end of the year. Things are going to be very, very difficult. But, you know, there's always a silver lining. There's always a positive, you know. This is a time of self-growth. We're all evolving. We're all throwing off all this old, you know. Yes, there are a lot of really shitty things happening in the world like you know like especially with corporations and governments and the elite and i don't want to get too much into it because i'm a massive conspiracy theorist and (laughs) i don't know what's acceptable (laughs) i mean i am too anything goes here it's all just like sharing info and knowledge isn't it so yeah yeah so yeah there's just so much going on and honestly I'm just trying to focus on how people can grow and connect to themselves. Like, yes, I completely understand what's going on and I'm all for like the ending of 5G and, you know, not having our freedom taken away Mm -hmm. and, you know, like just this, no offense, but I don't really believe in this whole virus thing. No Mm -hmm. offense to anyone out there, (laughs) Um, especially because I work in natural therapies. Um, So yeah, like I, I, I'm more trying to just get people to focus on themselves because we have had a time, whatever is going on, we have all had to stop Mm -hmm. and come home to ourselves. So that's kind of what I'm more kind of focusing on is just healing the selves and healing ourselves and getting people to more kind of focus on that than what is going on outside as well. I don't know. It's absolutely what we need to do because the biggest, biggest thing, if we're trying to raise our vibration and, like kind of like get through this this is all a massive test 
So the biggest mm-hmm. thing you can do is just help each other, like learn how to actually like evolve and grow and how to, like you say, see, see the silver lining and use this time to change yourself and kind of like, yeah, just evolve rather than just getting so involved in the fear and chaos that it looks like surrounding us. Mm-hmm, exactly. And even with the, the latest thing with that, um, how the police officer killed that guy, um, yeah, it's just another thing, another distraction, another way to separate the people, another way to, you know, because if all the people were coming together and, you know, working together, you know, we're all stronger than the elites and the governments and, and all of those types of things. And, you know, it's better to keep us separate. So I just, yeah, I haven't really said much about what happened with the George thing. Like, yeah. yes, my heart does go out to the black community and, you know, everyone who was affected. I, I don't know. I watched the video. For me, a lot of it felt very set up like mm. a lot of it felt like acting but then I don't know if that's completely true or not and then I don't know if, if what I'm saying is going to affect the people in the family or you know people that are really affected by this so for me I'm just staying out of this one I just mm-hmm. see this as just another media show yeah. a way to separate the people and yeah I'm just not buying into it for me it's just like yep make sure make us make sure all of us just come together just come together spread some love at the moment (laughs) that's it isn't it like it's Mm. it's almost like you don't even know what to believe anymore there's so much like information there's Mm -hmm. so much going on so half of it's just like literally anything that's outside of you just don't even get yourself too stressed out about it just keep focusing on yourself because you have to be at peace internally and balanced internally to manifest that in the world outside So what we really need to just do is sort ourselves. It looks scary. It looks like it makes you angry and all these different types of things. But whether it's true or not, the most important Mm -hmm. thing is to just get ourselves sorted out internally. And and that's the only way that we're ever going to bring world peace. Um, And Mm -hmm. you were saying as well, the, the, the eclipse, was that in Gemini then, the eclipse? Yes. So it was the lunar eclipse. Oh, no, no. So it was the lunar eclipse in um Sagittarius so right. we have the moon that's in Sagittarius and exactly opposite that is the sun and the sun is in Gemini okay yeah yeah so then we will have a solar eclipse on the 20th or the 21st of June and that means the sun and the moon are together in Gemini okay. so this is going to be so we're letting go of other people's belief systems so Sagittarius represents a lot of things but its core is other people's beliefs and faith and it can also mean religion and travel and optimism but we're really having to let go of what is not true Mm -hmm. and just and then move to the direction of Gemini which is finding our own information finding our own truths finding out what resonates with us and and that's all got to do with as well it's just like understanding the law of attraction you know ha- f- making new beliefs for ourselves you know letting go of our old patterning which we're so conditioned to do which you know Sagittarius can represent that you know other people's beliefs other people's patterning that we've taken on so we really need to just you know like change our subconscious patterning to change the inside so then we can see it on the outside but at the moment I feel like the whole 2020 is just dragging up all the subconscious all the collective unconscious that we've needed to look at and just look at this stuff and until we actually all see everything so we know what's real and what's not um we can't make any changes so I think it's just going to be a long process to be honest um because we're all in this together Exactly, yeah. But like you say, like the whole silver lining thing, it looks like it's going to be a traumatic or turbulent time. But in reality, when you think that all it's doing is, say, for this eclipse, it's going to just make us change our old mindsets and think some new mindsets and think for ourselves, like that's actually amazing. So even Mm -hmm. though it seems like a stress and a challenge, it's all for the benefit of like the Great Awakening and for like the the good world that's yet to come. So it's kind yeah, of like exactly. how you see it, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And another thing with Sagittarius too, Sagittarius likes to escape. It likes things to just be easy. So because it's a, a like an eclipse and a full moon, which is about letting go, and it's about letting go of escaping. It's about really connecting to our communities and what's close to us. 
you know? And so it's about not trying to escape our reality in our situations. It's about just facing it for what it is, picking out the parts that resonate with us and then just taking that, you know, like, I don't know if that makes much sense. Yeah. Like definitely. I'm doing like an astrology class online. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it really is just about just, you know, not running away from our problems, not putting our head in the sand, not looking for a grain of pasture, just fix what we have here, mm -hmm. you know, like fix the inside because everyone likes to do that. Everyone likes to reach for something external or a distraction yeah. to make us feel good, not realizing that all that good feeling is actually inside. And if we can change the inside, then, you know, everything is beautiful. Everything has beauty to it all. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? There's something beautiful, something beautiful in everything. Definitely. Did you just like out of context, but did you paint those pictures in the um, background? Yes, I did. Actually. That's so nice. <laughs> Were they like kind of like just from the heart channeled kind of vision type stuff or did you just enjoy doing it? No, well, actually, yes, this one is an alien eye oh, with cool. the world and the moon. Oh, really and, cool. and this one, I was going through a breakup mm -hmm. and um, was letting go of what I know was a very like past life relationship where I'd been with this person for lifetime after lifetime after lifetime. And I really needed to put myself first mm -hmm. instead of um, giving myself away for other people's needs or other people's directions. And I really went through a dark night of the soul and I drew the heart picture of what my new heart was going to look like of, you know, how it shines and how much beauty was coming in all the light that was coming in. And yeah, that's the that's story. Yeah, I, can, I can feel it in my own heart. Just looking at it. <laughs> beautiful. Thank you. So, you know, um, I think you were saying as well as the um, North and South node changed for the earth now, because it used to be, it used to be like a few months ago it was something and now it's gone to north node is um gemini is it in south node sagittarius yeah so every 18 months the nodes shift so last year and leading up to yeah last month it was in capricorn cancer so capricorn kind of represents reality laws, rules, structure, business, work, corporations. Cancer represents the home and our feelings. So all last year we were really being pushed to go and go to home, like go to our heart, go to our home, go to our feelings, find out what we really want, like trust our feelings and nurture ourselves instead of just focusing on success and money and what the external world thinks of us, you know. And now it's shifted um into Sagittarius being the south node which is past lives and then the future direction into um Gemini so for the next 18 months we're all being asked to you know connect to our local communities connect to ourselves have those conversations that we didn't have before you know like connect to people that are more in alignment with us you mm -hmm. know and and to be able to see the duality in things you know people that are so extremely opposite to us you know find you know unconditional love and acceptance and understand that the whatever irritates us about someone else that seems so opposite is usually something that we embody within ourselves as well. Um, yeah. And it's also the lovers. It's also represents siblings. Um, the tarot card, the lovers is Gemini. So yeah, there's a lot of aspects with Gemini. It's local travel. And as we all know, we can't travel anywhere. <laughs> Sagittarius is, you know, international travel, traveling the world, and Gemini is local travel. So we're all just stuck to local travel. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it's, it's really about just getting into communities, like connecting with like minded people, talking, expressing ourselves. And especially if anyone's wanting to really communicate and get online, now is the time to do it. Like, now is the time to have a YouTube channel and start something, you know, because we're all more online at the moment. We're all kind of being forced to stay home and connect with each other online so yeah if anybody you know here's a sign to start a youtube channel you just got it <laughs> yeah you, um, have you heard of that 13th zodiac and what do you think about it <sighs> look it's <laughs> <cheap>. <laughs> <Not really. laughs> look i i entertain the idea and some of it does seem correct um but what i use no 
Uh, look, there's also Vedic astrology, there's Egyptian astrology, um, there's, there's many types of astrology, but what works best for me is Western astrology, which yeah. is evolution astrology, which is the evolution of the soul. Um, so like Vedic astrology is very correct for me, but then it's hard to explain. Like just say we look at Vedic astrology, which is Indian astrology, the signs are all different. So mm -hmm. they're a bit behind. So I'm a Cancer, but in Vedic astrology, I'm a Gemini. Mm -hmm. So yes, it does relate to me, but I, I think people, when it comes to astrology, people just do what resonates more with them. Yeah. You know what I mean? But yes, I do. I do see what's correct about, you know, the extra, the extra sign and the extra planets. But for me, yeah, I just kind of just stick to what I know, but I do. Yeah. I do see the significance of all the other things. Yeah. Cause mm. I, uh, something interesting I heard about it was like, have you ever heard of astrotheology? It's like, yeah, it's basically like, um, the belief or like the knowledge or like the learning mm -hmm. that um, all the religious texts are actually like the science of the stars and say like as an example Jesus and his 12 disciples the 12 disciples were actually the 12 signs of the zodiac and oh yes yeah that kind of mm -hmm. stuff um, mm -hmm. and, and like the, the three wise men um like, yeah so yeah I completely believe in all that stuff yeah, yeah. um and yeah then, and that's why I don't understand why Christianity is so against astrology like you know, the three wise men were astrologers. Yeah. That's how they found <laughs> Jesus, you know? Like, yeah. it's just like, why? Like, why? And then, you know, a lot of the things with, like, Egyptian mythology is all about the stars. Mm -hmm. um, so Osiris and Isis and, and all that, they're all the constellations. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, everything, yeah, it's all, all, yeah. All, all, all that. Do you know what it is? In my opinion, it's like, if you knew the true science of the stars, because it, it even represents your body, doesn't it? Like you can wrap your body around mm -hmm. the zodiac and it represents. So you just know everything about yourself if you knew your true astrology. And it, yeah. it, to me, like religions, they try and take you rather than doing the internal work and learning about yourself internally. They've kind of gone mm -hmm. a bit off piece and now you're worshipping in a physical temple rather than in your actual temple or you're looking for mm -hmm. God externally rather than he's internally and you, you believe everything is outside of you rather than inside of you. And mm -hmm. even like with marriage and stuff, like I don't knock marriage because like those of my friends and family are married and stuff. But for me, the actual marriage mm -hmm. is the internal like, alchemy of the male and female within your soul, whereas like people, mm -hmm. Christianity is now make you believe marriage is an external thing and it just takes you off track to, mm -hmm. to like what, what really is going on, in my opinion. Yes, of course. Um, I think that too. It's, um, and it's being manipulated just to control people. It's, it, like, yes, I do think there are some good things. Like there are things that bring people together and it is about like doing the right thing, yeah. but it's not empowering people. It's not letting people know that they're an own God within themselves, that they create everything that they see. Like your eyes are also a projection and uh, what is it? Uh, it's both like they're a projection and a viewer. Mm -hmm. So yeah, you're completely correct. And also astrology does represent all the aspects in the body and mm -hmm. If you, if I looked at your birth chart, I could also tell you what health problems you do have mm -hmm. depending on what planets you have in particular signs. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, all the religions, they've got such beautiful things to them and even their texts are so beautiful, but I think that they've almost been misunderstood where the texts, like, they're almost like mm -hmm. al allegories and kind of metaphors for the stars, but people take accidentally taking them literal. Um, mm -hmm. So... So what, something interesting I heard about that 13th Zodiac, though, could be that, like, each of the um, 12 Zodiacs is, like, say, the 12 disciples of Jesus, and that's, like, the mm -hmm. conditioned energy or the conditioned soul. And then mm -hmm. the 13th Zodiac is when you achieve enlightenment, where you actually manage to overcome the conditioning of your soul and your Zodiac. And the 13th Zodiac is actually, like, no conditioning at all it's like the whole it's like the unconditioned soul which is like say the god's like soul and, and then mm -hmm. all the others the, the 12 zodiacs are the ones where you're conditioned and you're still pulled and pushed and pulled by the energies of the universe yeah well it makes sense and even the planet representing the 13th zodiac sign it's a very odd 
um, axis that it goes on. It just goes like it just kind of goes through our solar system on a really weird angle and not very regular. So yes, I could totally see your theory in thinking that that you know that is that next stage, that next stage of enlightenment and embodiment. So yeah, yeah. definitely. I think you're definitely got something there. <laughs> <laughs> something interesting I was uh, wondering I, I wonder if you know is um, you know like each of the um, star signs are governed by planets how come mm -hmm. the earth doesn't govern anything because we're on the earth so we're looking at it from we're looking at the planets from the earth right yeah that makes so sense. that's why yeah. she, she's not kind of an over an, an overseer of any of the different zodiacs like you can have aspects like, you know, like your path of fortune, which will, it's kind of where the earth was when you were born. And yeah. that will tell you where you're like, where you have a lot of luck, mm -hmm. but there is not really an earth thing. If yeah, that makes yeah, sense. Like yeah. there's not, you know, a big, um, it's not like a big, there's not many aspects on it, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. But then if we look at the earth, I would say if we were to put it in any star sign, it would be probably Taurus mm -hmm. because uh, Taurus is very earth based. And then we see Gaia as the earth and that represents the feminine and love and, you know, beauty. And that also would be Venus as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it, it's very much, a, earth would be very much a Taurus, Taurus sign. So yeah, yeah. but it's I just, it's just the way it is. Cause the way it's the way we look at it from earth's view that's all it is. It's only for that reason. Yeah, yeah. Mm. That's yeah. cool. And do you know um, that I kind of believe that the planets are the gods and also like the the archangels as well. Do you? Yeah. You ever, so, do you know who's who? Because I think the moon is is that Archangel Gabriel. Oh no, I don't know the names of the angels in the and no. the earth. No, I just no. stick to. <laughs> the astrology side yeah, yeah. Um, and the mythology side but yeah not the angel side no yeah yeah but do you believe that they're conscious beings the planets and stuff i don't know actually mm. sometimes i think like when i think when i zoom out of everything and i think of all of the you know 88 billion galaxies that we have i kind of think is there big giants out there like just playing marbles with all the planets <laughs> and, <laughs> um yeah i don't know how to answer that one but i do think they all like even if you go on YouTube, like all the planets have a vibration. So our earth has a vibration. It has a certain Hertz, like a sound frequency. Um, and same with all the planets, they're all different. But yes, I do think they all embody an archetype. They all have like a personality to mm -hmm. them. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I haven't looked into that one too much, but yeah, definitely they all embody something. They all have a character that then brings out our character and makes us embody that within ourselves. Mm -hmm. So then we can either heal it or transform it or whatever it is. So yeah, definitely. I do think yeah. that. Mm. And do you know how, like when you are born, do you know how you end up getting conditioned by the energies? Is it like you just get a stamp on it saying, right, you're this star sign? Or is it like when your soul comes down, it goes past the different planets and depending on like how close the planets are, they either affect you more or less. And so that kind of all then manifests into one chart when you get down to Earth. Mm. Or have you not really thought I think, I think with this question is I think as a soul, I think, you know, like, it's like, yeah, I want to come down when this and this and this is happening. These souls are going to be here. These planets are going to be in alignment. And this is going to help me learn this lesson, this lesson and this lesson. Yeah. And if you have a look at your chart, like you've chosen parents that might have been, might have abandoned you or not being emotionally supportive or whatever, whatever it is. So you've chosen all these circumstances so you can transform them. But I definitely think that you know we chose the alignments that we did so we can work with that planet energy definitely yeah. definitely yeah mm. and so do you think that you'd, you'd probably choose similar ones like lifetime after lifetime or do you think that depends on whether you've learned that lesson and then you might just kind of like it just depends really on your soul development doesn't it 
Yeah, well, you can see that in the chart. So you can see skip steps. So if you go to, say, Pluto, if you have any, like, squares, which is like the red lines going off Pluto, that is where you've missed a lesson. It's where you've always kind of escaped and, and didn't do the work or avoided doing whatever you needed to do. <laughs> and it kind of gets harder and harder every time. Or you have retrograde planets. You'll have a whole heap of retrograde planets. And that means you're throwing ex off external conditioning and kind of doing a life over. But you've been right. given, you'd have all the tools to do it, but you're just kind of redoing that life and you'll have people come into your life and do the same things that you need to do in a better way. So yeah, definitely, <clears throat> I definitely think that definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a square in your chart, would you advise that like, that's definitely something you want to be working on this lifetime? And is it something that you'd, you'd kind of like, yeah, you'd, you'd want to focus on that then, wouldn't you? If you keep missing this lesson. And it's getting hard. Yeah. Um, you'd want to have a look at your progress chart as well to see where you're at with it. Um, but usually a square, they turn into a blessing. If you can transform that square, it'll end up being one of your biggest blessings, one of your biggest gifts once you can get the lesson. So, yeah, going to see an astrology. But there's many aspects in your chart, like even – you know, every chart has a, a north node and south node and just, you know, letting go of the past or integrating it and moving towards the future direction like this. And then there's also Chiron is where you're wounded for lifetimes, but then that's where you help other people, but you're still wounded in that same yeah. pain. So there's so many aspects in the chart to work on. Like it's just like peeling off a layer of an onion it's like you get one <laughs> lesson and then the next one comes and the next one and then another one comes around just to make sure you got that last one right <laughs> um but you're it's, it's never ending but if there are things i think if you feel really stuck on like if there's patterns that you keep repeating it's really a good idea to see an astrologer to see if you have any skip steps you know what you need to transform because i know like when I started on the healing journey before I could read charts properly, I was just like a mess. Like you'd, there was no proper direction. It was just like, yes, I was like working with energy healers and I was trusting the energy that was coming through, but I didn't really like, I felt like I knew the past lives I had and I felt like I knew the soul direction I had, but I didn't, I couldn't really see it properly. Sometimes you need to be able to visually see it, like touch it, feel it see it and have someone explain it to you and I think in the spirituality scene it's kind of like you're just walking in the dark sometimes and or you can see through a keyhole um, of what you need to do and I just feel like having the knowledge of your birth chart just makes it so much easier you know what you have to work with you know you know what direction to go and what your triggers are and mm -hmm. yeah there's just so much help available knowing it mm -hmm. And it helps, you, it helps you overcome those things, but also like figure out how to use your disadvantages as like advantages in a way. Yeah. It's like you could, yeah. you could really easily go, oh, do you know what? I'm just not good at that. Or I'm just an angry person because I've got Mars wherever. I don't really know as much as a as you. <laughs> um, but rather than kind of just going, blaming it on the chart and that is how I am, you can really mm -hmm. then like, actually like use it as, as your leverage really to kind of change mm -hmm. and use those as your powers yeah. really can't you mm -hmm. so just say like mars is on your south node it pretty much means you were born angry like <laughs> maybe you had a traumatic ending in your last life maybe you really wounded from your last life but you really need to integrate that anger into something else into like creativity depending on the sign and the house that it's in so yeah like just having that self-awareness makes it so much easier like ridiculously easier of what you need to work with and and, and even things like I don't know if you've heard of Saturn return when you get to like 27 28 29 30 is when Saturn comes back around to where you were born mm -hmm. and this just is a complete life change and I wish I knew about this earlier. I wish I knew what lessons I had to, you know, like to learn and what I had to let go of and change, but I didn't know. Like, mm. and if I had that information, my Saturn return wouldn't have been as bad. I wouldn't have felt like when Saturn returns back to its sign where you were born, 
it's like you have a gray cloud hanging over your head for like three years and it's like there's no ending and you just feel like giving up and there's actually a lot of suicides at this time as well right. so it's um it's i think it's very important that we have this kind of information you know mm-hmm. so yeah yeah so because i heard a saturn return as well also means that you've actually suffered through every single trial and test that you could possibly be tested on and then mm-hmm. that that's like a symbol of you've actually been through everything so anything new that comes you've actually experienced it before in some kind of way is that right yeah. <clears throat> so your astrology chart really gets activated your saturn return so when you get to about 30 so before 30 you're kind of just playing at your past lives you're kind of doing the same thing you did in your past lives like it's like the universe goes a little bit easier on you um it's like <laughs> you can make the mistakes and kind of get away with it but once you start to hit like the satin return it's like like satin's like the task master it's like mm-hmm. the teacher and it's like now you need to learn those lessons and then right. after that satin return you don't get those like you know that little slap on the wrist anymore like you get sent to the corner or you lose everything or you know you will be forced to stay inside until you get that lesson so yeah, yeah i think yeah realistically it's yeah your chart really mainly gets activated around 30 around that age around the saturn return Mm -hmm. um so yeah it's it's a really tough time saturn return is very very tough but everything you said yeah is correct you're kind of playing out all these past life scenarios you're you're doing all the things that you did before but now it's just time to graduate so it's like you're graduating into the next phase of your life Mm -hmm. if that makes sense yeah Mm -hmm. And so when you get to like, say around 60, you must get a second one. Does he ease off a bit then or is it like? <laughs> no, no, it's the same. My dad's actually going through this at the moment. Oh. <laughs> it's like when you have like the midlife crisis. <laughs> right. Um, so yeah, I was right. trying to explain this to my dad. I'm like, dad, look, I know it must feel like things are really difficult for you right now. You know, you're moving into the next stage of your life. Like Saturn's like the taskmaster. And my dad's just like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Things are just really hard right now. Okay. So yeah, I yeah. I just need to change jobs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's funny, isn't it? Like, my family don't know a lot about it either. And I say to my sister, like, yeah, but sure, Mercury's in retrograde. She's like, oh no, like, what, what does that mean? Like, okay, like, and, and she finds it so funny that I'll just go, yeah, it's probably because the moon's in Pisces right now, whatever it is. And yeah. when people don't know, it's just like a foreign language and it almost sounds quite silly until you really just, like, understand it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I was um, on the weekend, I was hanging out with the whole heap of Italians and we went um, – to the Grampians it's a place in Victoria that's really beautiful lots of mountains and stuff like that and I was telling them it's the eclipse it's the full moon June's going to be really hard and they're all just looking at me like Alicia you have serious problems I'm like that's okay that's okay you guys can just you know hit me up when you're struggling <laughs> that's right <laughs> I find myself like I found myself a lot when these eclipses are happening and stuff. I'm, I've been aware of the astrology for 2020 as well. And, mm. and I'm, I'm kind of like all or nothing. So I'm, I'm there like, right, there's eclipse. I'm like, mum, the apocalypse might happen. <laughs> the world's not going to end. <laughs> so make mm. sure that if, if the apocalypse happens, the zombie starts roaming around the world. <laughs> Just the, <one> that, like, <laughs> the worst things you could ever think of. I'm there like, right, so if we all die tomorrow, <laughs> we've all got our like, torches in case there's a blackout. Literally, I'm like that. <laughs> And then the eclipse yeah. comes and nothing happens. And I'm just there, like, it must have just been an energetic thing. <laughs> but, yeah. and then, but like, um, to what extent do you think that you should kind of like read astrology and go, wow, I need to like prepare. Like say I've had times where I've looked at my week and I've seen that one day says, oh, careful, going out today, you might have accidents today and stuff. And, and then it's like, oh, I don't really want to go out. But if I don't ever pay attention, then I'd live my life and I don't seem to, it doesn't seem to go as bad as what I'd assume from reading the star chart. Oh, uh, yeah. So well, wh- that's where because do you think in the, the line? Are you talking about like if you're reading it from a magazine or like a newspaper? 
No, like when you um, I've I've got this. Um, there's this woman called Astro Lada. She's got like a website. And oh she's, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's really cool. Mm. She she basically gives you your your future week on based mm -hmm. on your star chart and where the planets are, like what your days are going to be like. And so she'll say if Mercury's trying in this or this and that, like all that type of stuff. No, I wouldn't follow that because okay. I would just follow your own chart because that is very generic. Mm -hmm. um, it's just okay. You what is your star sign? Um, I'm Aquarius. I've got okay. Um, so you have a sun in Aquarius, but you might have like your Venus in a different house than somebody. Like just say, there's Joe, Barry, and Murray, and then there's you, and then you know you have your Venus and Mercury in Pisces, and they have their Venus and Mercury in Capricorn, and that one was born in 1973, and you're born in 1990, and you know what I mean? Like you've got all different aspects. So I I never I never 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 follow what anything sun sign horoscope ever. Yeah. Because I, I thought, because you, you basically give her your whole chart. So I thought that it was like a more of a computer-based thing, but it would take, say, where your Venus is and it would compare it to where the planets are and it would kind of give you that. Mm -hmm. But it does seem that, like, it, when you read the stars, there's almost like a pinch of salt to be had where it's all happening, but don't overreact about it or whatever because it's all mm -hmm. just lessons. And um, yeah. it's just better to be prepared and be aware of things, but don't feel like panicked like your whole life's going to end just because you say you've got your Saturn return coming up and stuff like that yeah well that's the thing because a lot of I don't want to knock um Lada because she's great but a lot of those um the computer generated yeah and I just think it's better just to know your own chart like yeah. even just having going on astro.com getting your chart or having a chart reading and then getting planetwatcher.com it's just like an app where you go on the internet and it shows you where all the planets are right now oh, cool. so you can see directly what's affecting you do you know what i mean um yeah but oh, look it's up to you i don't want to tell people what to do but i never follow like no. a gener computer generated thing um it's just way off i find yeah. all the time all the okay, time it's cool. better to do it yourself and then any astrologer like say Kaipacha or any of the big astrologers that are out there they just do like a reading for the collective of what's going on now they don't necessarily do the individual star signs like yeah maybe like the leo king he does um but that's more just to get people into astrology more just to make people understand a little bit more but it's too generic yeah. and yeah and when you focus on it too much you're not kind of living yourself you're not creating your own life like sometimes mm -hmm. even for me like I have a lot of astrologers that I watch and then I think oh this is going to happen this is going to happen and then I have to you know plan my day around this instead of just waking up and thinking no today's going to be great I'm going to create everything that I want and yeah so I've gone on both directions like I don't know if I'm making any sense Definitely. but like sometimes I just don't watch the astrologers and just do my own thing and then I'll just get hit with a curveball and it's like okay I'm gonna go watch the astrologers now and then they said all this stuff that I should have known but then I don't know I'm trying to change my subconscious thinking and then letting go of other people's beliefs I'm really trying to um create a new world for yeah. me yeah, so I'm kind of in the same position of you as like just letting go of what other people say and other people's predictions and what's going on and kind of creating my own world. So, mm -hmm. it, look, I'm still struggling with this one. Like even yeah. in my videos um, at the start of the year in January when I was in Egypt, I was really tossing up whether I still wanted to do astrology videos or just do videos on more of attraction or just talk about the collective energy right now. It's very – because I want to – help people in the right way mm -hmm. so i think a little bit of everything is good mm -hmm. i don't know if i'm making any sense right now it's like pisces moon it's just <laughs> like <laughs> it's also like past midnight at your at yours isn't it yeah <laughs> but no you absolutely are and what i think as well is because i keep coming back to this whole i'm trying to like wake people up and tell people what's going on and like be warned like that it's not going to be easy but let's um kind of come together and always remember like unity and love and things like that 
And it yeah. always goes back to just trying to be positive in yourself and keep that positive vibe because we are still creating our reality. So mm -hmm. it's like you say almost, being aware of these things, you could just go, right, I know that this is what could happen tomorrow, but I'm going to take the positive aspect and I'm going to use that to know that tomorrow is a really good day to send my book out for publishers or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And try and yep. focus on the positive aspects and utilizing the positive energies rather than, say, focusing on the negative because I don't know if it's just something in the air but it's really easy to do at the minute to just kind of feel like doom and gloom and just to automatically just go to that negative subconscious thought mm -hmm. and yep it's and then it brings you to the thinking of okay if I'm creating my world and I'm creating my reality am I creating where the planets are right now am I like <laughs> don't say that <laughs> no <laughs> oh my god these are the thoughts I regularly have yeah and <laughs> Um, like what even is yeah. real? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm. But no, so I'm I'm kind of myself, like in the midst of like trying to change how I put myself across out on like the, the media platform mm -hmm. and what how I want to help people. So. Yeah, I'm kind of like, I don't know, lately I'm just been in like what's working, what's real, what's not. Um, yeah, I'm kind of like just like everybody else going through this process, but I've kind of just been more focused on myself where I think a lot of people are more like focused on politicians and, you know, the coronavirus and all that type of stuff. I kind of don't focus on that. I'm trying yeah. to focus on the what's real within myself. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's something that I definitely need to keep reminding myself about too. Mm. Um, so something I was going to ask is, you know, like um, each star sign, there's the um, four elements, isn't there? So um, earth, water, fire and air. And don't, mm -hmm. they, don't each individual zodiac have, uh, say, like uh, something else that goes with it? Like you can have one that's um, hot and dry and then one that's hot and wet or something like you can have the element of fire, but it can, you can have like a cold fire or a dry fire. Yeah. fire. <laughs> can you explain it to me? Like an air fire? Like if you have like, you're meaning like you might have a lot of fire in your chart and air in your chart, or you may be thinking of Vedic astrology because Vedic astrology more goes down like the hot right the cold air type thing yeah it might be that it was mm. what it reminded me is i'd heard that mars as a planet for example is a hot and dry planet and then yeah. you can get, mm -hmm. get different planets that are kind of like hot and um like moist or different things and so what i'm interested mm -hmm. in at the minute is how different energies and different star signs can affect each other energetically and i found mm -hmm. that air and fire signs can affect each other more than Mm -hmm. and air and like an earth sign or it seems to go like earth can affect air more than air can affect earth and there's different like ways that it works Almost yeah like they connect better this type thing yeah mm -hmm. and they connect better as well so like even like water and earth signs they go better so they form like a sextile to each other mm -hmm. um and which is an easy aspect in astrology mm -hmm. um but if you say like put you know like fire and, and, and air they also make an easy aspect to each other yeah. um and so yeah so they all there's so if you think about it like air makes fire bigger yeah 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 <laughs> and it can also blow <laughs> fire, out. fire out yeah yeah, yeah. and yeah. air can air can also blow fire out and fire can because it consumes air it can make air feel like you can't breathe a bit like um claustrophobic and stuff yeah my, my yeah. partner's like a fire sign and i'm an air sign so we watch each other and how we affect each other energetically and like and mm -hmm. it's it's interesting but i also would love to learn more about how say my mum's an earth sign if i picked up a mm -hmm. negative energy trying mm -hmm. to suss out who it could be from who can affect me more easily because they they each kind of like it's like one overrides another do you, do you think or is it literally just like fire and air and then water and earth no it's it's every oh, everything it could be anything it yeah. can be anything really and then i would also but i don't think everything's astrology based then you can also go to like just 
you know, your partner might be a little bit like your mum and maybe they both trigger you in the same way. Mm. You know what I mean? And then when your mother's pregnant with you, she lines you up for your default emotion. So however she felt when she was pregnant, whatever her problems were, her stresses were, you were built with that same, however she was feeling during that pregnancy. No that is like built in with you and that's like your default emotions and your default mechanisms of how she felt then so yeah it's, it's very difficult and then people that we've had past lives with you know they really do trigger us you know and especially with where we're wounded like and then we connect to other people energetically you know we've connected to them so they help us heal those wounds and mm-hmm. that comes from trauma that comes from painful experiences mm-hmm. i don't know anyone that's made major change from peace, love, and harmony, Mm -hmm. people change from, you know, crappy experiences from really being pushed to the limit from, you know, being at rock bottom. So yeah, like, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, who triggers you the most? I don't necessarily think it's the star signs. It's where I would look at two birth charts and where they're connected to each other, what planets are rubbing up against each other, what planets are in negative, not I don't like saying negative aspect, but difficult aspects and what past lives you've had and things like that. Yeah. Like I don't just focus just on astrology. I kind of like to use everything, um, you know, like, cause it's more than just the planets, you know? Yeah. Yeah, mm. there's so much to it, isn't there? Like, yeah. <laughs> it's like the rabbit hole, you just go deeper and deeper. And it almost comes mm. to a point where, like you say, you just absolutely need to know your own or you need to go to someone who can tell you all about it because there's mm-hmm. so much to know about it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, if, yeah. and in some of my readings, um, I actually do, um, like if someone came to me for a reading and we had a little bit of extra time, I'd say to them, like, what's your partner's chart? Or if you're having, if there was a really big theme with same issues with the mother or issues with the father, I would say, you know, what's your mother or father's chart, whatever it is. And we'd, you know, go over some of it, you know, in the time that we have Mm -hmm. just so, you know, there's a little bit more understanding of the dynamics there. And like usually our parents and our siblings and our partners you know, we've all had past lives together and we swap roles, you know, like, you know, maybe you were married to your brother or your no. sister in a past life and your boyfriend was your brother and, you know, like we just swap roles, you know, like, and then when we go back up to wherever we go, it's like, yeah, all right, we did our best, but we still sucked here. Let's yeah. just change roles. Like we'll do it on a sibling way. Maybe we can work it out on a sibling level mm-hmm. instead of on a partnership level. Yeah. And, you know, you feel that with people. You feel like when you meet someone, like you feel like my lover, you feel like my brother, you know, like, you, you know, you feel like my best friend, you yeah. feel like my dad. And it's just like a representation of all the lives that you've had with that person. And these are the relationships that are really triggering. Like mm-hmm. they really like hit you where, you know, you're a weak point are or just those triggers that you just <laughs> yeah because you, mm. your soulmates are like your soul family aren't they they're not necessarily mm. the the like yin and yang of you that your soulmate can be a friend family member and you can have multiple soulmates whereas your twin flame is like the masculine or feminine like manifested version of you is it okay I used to, back in like 2012, 2011, I used to be big into like the twin flame thing, but I'm not anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, it's been really used in a really toxic way. Mm-hmm. A lot of people are staying in really toxic situations because they're told that it's their twin flame. Yeah. And so people think, oh, I've got to put up with this because it's my twin flame and things like that. Yes, I do believe there are twin flames. But I think it's just part of like a current, like an energy and whatever state of energy or whatever vibration you are at the time, you will meet somebody that is that energetic twin for right, you. Yeah. And once you heal that or once you transform from that, then you go to a next vibration and then you'll connect to somebody else that is that uh, like and because we live on so many dimensions and so many parallel universes, it doesn't make sense that there's only just that one person. Like, yes, we can feel so close to them. Yes, they can trigger us so much and transform us so much, but it's probably because we've had so many lifetimes with them and we're all here to help each other. You know, like 
I don't know, people in the spiritual community are probably going to kill me for going against the whole twin flame thing. But for me, it's just been made so toxic. And honestly, my life, I think I've had like so many like twin flame experiences. Like, and I thought I'm trying to. I'm part of like the Pluto Libra generation and that is letting go of relationship dynamics. So I have a lot of relationship karma. I believe like I need to change the way that I do relationships, like needing people to feel loved and needing people to be somebody and just being my own authentic self, the am that I am that I am. So for me, like, I know that every time I meet someone, it's just like, what the hell has happened in the past? Like, what do I have to deal with this time? Um, but <laughs> you get the stuff, I just I'm know, straight I, like, I just know that the whole twin flame thing has really been blown out of proportion and it's been used more now for toxic than good. Mm. And I just, but that is my, that's my take on it. I don't want to convince anybody of anything else. Like if you believe in twin flames, like, and that works for you, that is fantastic. Um, it's just in my work in like, you know, doing Reiki, doing astrology charts, seeing people's soul direction and their life blueprint. I just know that it's a lot more different than we think. Um, but I don't want, oh my God, I don't want anyone to be upset. So if you, if anyone buys into the twin flame thing and it works for you, please go ahead. But if it's toxic, let it go. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, I actually really like your theory of it um, with the whole, like, it just depends on matching on the energy at the time and the lessons you're learning at the time. Um, mm. And I think as well, like, I don't know whether twin flames, I, I don't actually know what I think about them, whether they are like real or not. But what I do know is People often mm. get mistaken as well in thinking like the whole marriage thing I was talking about, like you need yeah. to find your twin flame to be whole, but it's actually you internally. It's actually just the balance of your mm -hmm. own masculine and femi feminine energies. And a yeah. lot of people can confuse it into thinking, oh, I need to find this person and then we're like together. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I've heard a lot of people. Sorry, go on. Yeah, back in the day, before the whole twin flame thing, it was like, I need to find my soulmate because... I need to find my other half, you know? Yeah. And it's always been some name. It's always some name of something. <laughs> and it's just because we're not whole within ourselves. We've been conditioned to think that we have to look outside of ourselves to be whole. Yeah. Like we learnt it at school. We learnt it at home. You know, if we wanted our parents' love, we had to be good. We had to do what we're told. We, you know, same with school. You get rewarded if you do good at school and then you're somebody. You know, and then if you get married and have children, then you're somebody. Like a lot of women that I marry, I'm like, I mean, sorry, not, not that I marry. A lot of women that I meet, um, they, I was like, how was your life? What was your life like? How was life growing up? And their first thing is, well, I got married. Mm. <laughs> and then, then they tell me about their life. It's like they had no life before they got married. Right. Um, and this is more the older generation, not necessarily like our generation. But, yeah, it's, I think we've just been raised to be incomplete. Mm. They, you know, the corporations want us to feel incomplete. So we buy that makeup. So we get the hair extensions. So we get the breast implants and, you know, look for this guy and have to get a Ferrari. Like, yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> it's so true the funniest thing I've seen is like a little photo and it's like um when you finally meet up with your soulmate and realize why you spent 2,000 years apart with each other yeah. it's so true <laughs> like you meet someone your soulmate and it's actually the biggest stress of your life just trying to like you, they show you so much they're just like reflections like every everything in your life mm -hmm. is just a mirror and I've seen something yeah. interesting that says there's like seven different types of mirrors, seven different things that things can be reflecting back to you. Um, mm -hmm. But like the whole soulmate, twin flame thing, people go after it, but it really is that you just have to be ready for a lot of self-work if you want in mm -hmm. that. But, you know, it's kind of needed as well. Like I, um, mm -hmm. I just find it, um, I feel like I've met definitely like someone who I've been in past lives with and it's the most work I've ever done. And it's like, mm -hmm. can be work every day. It can be stressful. It's not like an easy, fluffy ride, but it is actually just so valuable because I just know I would have changed so much in the small amount of time mm -hmm. than if it had just been left to my own devices with it. Yeah, because I think you have sort of contracts where it's like, yep, 
we've organized to meet up with each other. If you're on the, if you're not on your sofa, I'm going to meet up with you to push you in the right direction. Right. You know, if you're not learning the lessons from your past life, if you're not heading in the right direction and you're at an energetic vibration that matches with mine, I'm going to meet up with you and, you know, make you go in that right direction. You know, it's like, what is it? They love you. That soul loves you so unconditionally that they will treat you so badly. So you get back on track. Yeah. And I feel like that is like that with like the narcissist empath dynamic, you know, like nurse, I mean, empaths need to wake up and mm. it's huge. And like, cause they're just pouring from an empty cup all the mm. time. Like mm. they're just giving and giving and giving and not giving to themselves. And they're here to help humanity to hold that light. And if they're not holding that light within themselves, we're all not really evolving. So then we meet these narcissists that just take and take and take and take and just drain you of everything. So you have to say no yeah. and start filling your own cup. And if narcissists weren't around to help wake empaths up, you know, it just, and especially all this stuff going on at the moment, like we're all moving into the age of Aquarius where we're having to wake up. We can't live in these dark ages anymore. Like the Pisces, you know, the dynamic that was going on where everyone was kind of asleep. We're needing to wake up. And then that's why we have all these really intense soul contracts coming through. So we really get the lesson and quick Yeah. because like, yeah, I don't know. Like back in the day, Things just seem so much easier. It's like the relationships and situations we're having right now are just so much more intense and we're learning so much quicker and we're waking up so much quicker. Like literally since 2012, things mm -hmm. have just been accelerated, accelerated learning. Um, so, yeah, look, I love all the twin flames. I, I really do love all the twin flame stuff. I'm such a romantic. I love fairy tale romance. But... For me, I think it's just about like what you said, just being whole within yourself mm -hmm. because we're all born whole. It's just that we've been conditioned to feel that we're not. Yeah. And now we're just on the journey of finding our wholeness within ourselves. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So true. But hopefully, hopefully soon, we can, um, you know, start teaching this at an earlier age. Like, I would love, like, if I had kids to send them, like, to a school. Like, we have Steiner schools here. I don't know if you've heard of it, where, like, kids just get taught and, folk, like, kids just, like, they focus just on that child's, like, creativity and what they're good at no instead way. of, you know, making them, like, you know, learn things. Like, obviously, you have to learn everything, but there's not a big emphasis on what they can't do, you know? Um but yeah, I'd really love to be able to have all these things taught in school. Like that's so could amazing. You imagine our world. Can we imagine our world if like we were all taught these things? Like we had self love class, and like you know the energy energy class, and you know like planet class or whatever it is. Yeah. Like just learning all these amazing things. Like in health class, like proper health class. Like mm -hmm. you know, like learning about plants and nature and you know what helps you and you know, things like that. Like, mm -hmm. oh my God, we would be like super yeah. amazing beings. <laughs> yeah. It's coming. <laughs> my yeah. finger it's definitely coming. I don't know um whether I don't know whether it's going to be like transitioning for like to the end of the year for seven years for like, I don't know how long it's going to take, but what I do know is that the golden age of Aquarius is coming and that's the most important mm -hmm. thing. Um, I don't it's think just... it's going to be in our lifetime. I think. Really? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when we come back again. Really? But I don't think it's going to be yeah, in our lifetime. Maybe towards the end. But yeah, a lot of structures still need to completely collapse, I think. Yeah. Mm. So have you been like checking out all the planets? Do you actually have a timeline or? No, but I think things, I don't want to, I don't want to upset anyone, but I think things are going to be crazy like this at least till 2024. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it it's just radical learning, radical change. And yeah, we're all really struggling because we're all just having to wake up so quick. But yeah, yeah I just don't think, you know how, like at the end of the year, last year, 
everyone was saying, oh, 2019 was so hard. 2020 is going to be so good. I'm looking forward to it. And I'm just thinking as an astrologer, you guys have no idea. Like Mm -hmm. 2020 is going to be so hard. And I just, yeah, I just think that at least till 2024. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Mm. Well, that's not too bad, you know. Once the worst Mm. is over, it can only get better then, can't it? I don't see it as the worst like for me I love doing like the deep dark dirty work that nobody wants to do all the stuff that everybody runs away from I love going into that stuff like for me seeing everybody process their stuff seeing all their illusions and delusions just collapse so they focus on what's real and what's not like like I love that within myself because once you go to that place once you dig deep and heal that stuff you transform and you're free mm-hmm. you're not constantly running trying to distract yourself and things like that so i don't i don't see that like shadow work as bad yeah yeah for me i don't know like i because I, I, I deal with a lot of it um so for me i don't see it as bad but for the general public it's just like oh no <laughs> yeah yeah but when you don't know you it, yeah. it, it's more like I've heard someone say that you'd rather see the train coming than it just like hits you and you had no idea it was coming. And I think that yeah. if there's anything to be taken from all of this, it is just to like keep, let people be more aware, remind them of like just living within like a love frequency and trying to make them see the best and take this opportunity for change. But just kind mm-hmm. of having, having the awareness of what could come um, yeah. and using it to your advantage really rather than just not knowing at all. Well, that's why I'm doing the videos that I'm doing, um, especially for people that have done their birth chart so they know what's going on. So I, when I've done their reading, I've gone over what all the houses mean, where their planets are. And, you know, so then I then every month I follow up with videos so they know what's going on, where the full moon is and what area of their chart is going to be affected what they need to let go of, what they need to, you know, integrate and start new things, set intentions. So that's why I'm doing um, what I'm doing, just so that information is out there. And there's obviously so many other people that are doing the same, just trying to get that information out there. So we're not just having that water thrown in our face. Someone's just saying, okay, I'm going to throw some water in your face. Yeah. And then, you know, it's not so bad. <laughs> yeah, you can brace for it. Yeah. <laughs> So Alicia, what, what can we expect as your next video on your Soul in ba- Balance channel then? Or are you still working on it? Okay, so what I've been doing the last year or so is um, full moon videos and new moon videos. They've been my predominant videos. Um, but then I have done little videos like healing videos, like I did like a self-worth video. I did a Hapono Ono Hawaiian healing thing. I've done you know, healing from narcissistic abuse videos, um, knowing when you're a broken empath video. Um, and then I started doing daily videos and then I stopped doing that. But what I'm wanting to do at this point in time is continue doing the full moon and new moon videos every month, but then also starting to do like daily vlog astrology videos. So it's more like kind of, personal so I'm kind of talking about how I'm feeling for the day maybe that might resonate with other people and then I'm going to bring in what planetary aspects are going on how I'm coping with it um I'm kind of trying to make it more personal and try and do that every day um as of next week actually so That's yeah <laughs> and so your stuff's mm. on it's on YouTube isn't it it's called Soul Imbalance your channel yeah it's and called Soul Imbalance you've got a Facebook as well do you have a website or anything I do have a website. It is um, soulimbalance.net, um, but I'm actually changing it at the moment. I had a very beautiful website and then I changed servers and then a lot of it crashed. So I'm having to put it back up. So yes, yeah, so I do have a website. If you'd like a reading from me, all the information is there. But yeah, that's about it really. Cool. And can you con- get contacted on Facebook if anyone wants a reading as well? Then? Yeah, of course. Facebook, YouTube, um even my email is info at soulimbalance.net so if anyone wanted a chart reading from me you know just email me what you're interested in i can try and find something that will suit you okay so alicia i'm well aware it's what was probably like half one at at your time (laughs) i really appreciate you staying up to chat with us 
Um, it's been so nice having you on and chat all about astrology. I just love it so much, but I don't really know loads about it. So to just like chat to you, it's been... You do. You're funny. really good. I think you know a lot. Like you're getting information from Astro Lada. You were talking to me about, you know, the extra star sign. No, girl, you know what you're talking about. Thanks. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah, so thanks so much for um, coming on. It's been such a blessing. I'll let you go and get some nice sleep now. Um, and enjoy the rest of your weekend so um, guys our class realize family um, thanks for tuning in um, this has been Alicia Wilcox and check out her stuff on soul and balance it's really really cool um, Alicia thanks so much and I'll um, chat to you soon all right thank you thank all you right. for having me it's okay speak to you in a bit bye all right bye to realize the body is the temple water is the source of life we breathe in life and then we synthesize this liquid sun will free your glands and begin to decalcify peer through your third eye see through the lies and give your body what it's missing we dehydrated and that's the human condition but when you clean the body and believe the body you set yourself up to receive the body see it's a sharp knife that's the water of life it's like a sword cutting parasites down the signs. It takes a certain kind of faith to know that you're divine. And if it comes from urethra, then it's alkaline. We serve in truth, and it don't matter how weird it really gets. It's the linchpin ascended masters to initiates. We alkalize to realize. Open your mind and find you had it inside this whole damn time. We alkalize to realize. Open your mind and find you had it inside this whole damn time. You had it inside this whole damn time.